Hello everybody. With the recent first name storm of the year here in the UK, Storm Arwen, they hit the East Coast pretty badly and there was a lot of damage. I think most of the storms normally come in from the West and, and get us here. But because they're coming from the East this time, very little damage over here on the uh, West Coast. I know there has been some damage, not in our village, but I have seen some down sort of Blackpool way. Uh, little spitty spotty bits, but obviously the worst of it was over on the East Coast. Um, I'll put a link underneath actually, because Tony Smith posted a video of his site. It's just interesting just to see what can happen to things that you think will be solid, like a greenhouse. And um, go and have a look at that video. It's, um, it's quite heartrending to see what somebody's hard work, what's happened to somebody's hard work. While you're over there, you can subscribe to Tony's channel as well, because uh, he's a heck of a fella. <laughs> but anyway, the only thing that happened to me was this hot box behind me here was blown apart, but that was my fault. I normally put it together with um, nut and wing bolt, uh, bolt and wing nut, so that I could take it apart. It's flat panelized, and I only left it on the bolt, so I didn't put the nuts on it. So my own fault really but i'll put that back together now and we'll crack on today <laughs> so here's the the state of it it's not really that much of a state it just really needs picking up you can see the bolts just here and, and um they were just bent a bit and they fell apart this one unfortunately landed on top of this spike here but that's just a little repair so all in all not too much damage here in fact there is no damage apart from that little hole so very very fortunate and my heart goes out to all those gardeners and um, householders and people who have suffered over in the northeast terrible state of affairs but anyway let's get this put back together so i got this hot box back together yesterday you can see there's still a great big hole in here what i'm going to do is bring some warm water down or a warm cloth just to clean that off before i tape that up uh, and it wants to be on a dryish, sunny day if I can really, then the tape will stick better, last longer. But got it back together yesterday and I'm now going to sort of half dismantle it to plant it and talk about it as well. So I'll we'll just get the front off and then we'll come back. So on these sides here, I'm just going to try and pull this apart and hope you can see it, but I've got it bolted through there's the bolt there and it runs all the way through to that side where i put a wing nut on to hold it together and it just simply pulls apart and you can see the bolt that goes through so this is a panelized protection structure basically that's what it is in technical terms it's panelized because it comes apart into panels it protects plants and it's a structure. <laughs> it doesn't get much simpler than that. Let's go and have a, cl a close look at the front I've just taken off. And all this is, is tile battens. They're two by one pieces and they're just screwed together to, to keep them nice and strong. And they're nice and light. And then they're wrapped round and stapled on the inside with plastic. This polytunnel plastic, you can buy a meter of it, 15, 15 meters long. So it's about three foot by about getting on for 50 foot for about 20 quid from a polytunnel company. The timber battens themselves are expensive, especially at the minute when wood is in such high demand for building projects while people are stuck at home. That's almost doubles in price. And um, so to make these now would be very expensive, probably 60, 70 quid but they are worth it but what you can do is if you can see a house local to you that's having its roof remade go and speak to the roofers they'll gladly give you the battens that are coming off the old roof and if the homeowner agrees you can have them and you can make something of them paint them protect them chop out any rot that's there but you can make structure and that's what i used to use it's only because in recent years, I helped some builders, some roofers on a job they were doing local to me, and they gave me some brand new battens, which you know I was very lucky to get, but I did have to do some work to get them. But again, it was worth it, because I've not only made those boxes, I've made boxes behind there for my carrots, 
and there's another box at the back as well and I've still got some of the timber left to do some more things with and all my temporary benching in the, in the small polytunnel was made from it as well but anyway it's panelised so that it will store flat when not in use and they're bolted together easily as you saw and then the lid just sits on top with a few bricks on just to keep it down so it's a very simple structure and it's sized to fit all of my raised beds all of my raised beds are the same size and even the new ones I'm building at the back will all be the same size so these structures can move around anywhere on the plot that I need them but anyway let's get on and plant them so I'm planting my um, broad beans in, in these hot boxes and I'll tell you why because hey they're protected but what can happen is if you plant them in your polytunnel which I've done on a few occasions if we get a bout of warm weather before they've set all the pods next year and you've got the harvest if you've planted them inside in your polytunnel they can bolt looking rather festive in here isn't it <laughs> this is one of my other hot boxes and I'll just shove that out of the way a little bit you can see I've got some fennel in here now they've grown on well well we had the warm weather I'm not so sure exactly what they're doing now I'm hoping they might carry on bulbing and uh, carry on to get to the point where they're bulbing and we can get a harvest I'm not sure I've never tried this before with fennel so we'll see might be a slow burner or they could bolt again like I was just talking about about the broad beans when the weather warms up next year we'll see but at the minute growth is good and this is another use for the hot box because in here now we're double protected from frost so I've got the overall protection of the actual polytunnel itself and then inside this hot box I just have a piece of timber for the lid to sit on so it just gets ventilation in there and this is again another use for these hot boxes what I tend to have is I'll have these set up in the early spring when we're still getting frost and I've got tomatoes growing as soon as they're too big for the greenhouse at home they come down and they go in these hot boxes for two three weeks something like that until the weather's warm enough where I can actually plant them out and protect them in situ in in situ sometimes even with these hot boxes around I'll also use these hot boxes without the lids uh, to grow and protect sweet corn um, because sweet corn are quite shallow rooted they can easily get blown around by the wind and let's face it as they get going and growing they are just like big sails and the wind can catch them blow them over with this with this thing surrounding them that doesn't happen they get away good you get good plants and a good harvest so the multiple use and when they're not in use they can easily be taken down and um, packed away somewhere stored easier now fair enough I know a lot of people would be thinking well you could do the same with hoops you know the Alcathene hoops and I've got some of those outside myself but what I have found is that the hoops will come up around here and we'll cut this corner off so it will limit the size of the plants that you can grow at the edges that's why I use these things but anyway there we go so in my sewing video the other day I said I would mention something which would help with the plants that I was sewing back in that in that video and that if you didn't have protection you can use it and this is it because once this is up and it's got the lid on it's exactly the same and no different than that that polytunnel the only difference is obviously you can't walk in it but it's still a, a polytunnel it's got polytunnel plastic on it around it so you can sow your seeds pop the trays inside one of those or in a cover or just simply use you can maybe see some of the blue hoops I've got there some of those blue hoops over the top maybe some fleece over maybe some plastic if, if you wanted to buy some of that or go to full hog like I have with these hot boxes or even better get yourself a polytunnel or a greenhouse but there we go that's another use for that so these things are so blooming versatile and they get used for so many things down here for me and on the same basis as I say I've got one there covered in veggie mesh that's got my carrot crop in there I'm still harvesting from them we've eaten tons 
They're going to keep us going right through Windsor, and when they're done, I've got more in the polytunnel. But this has been absolutely fabulous. You can see it's a veggie mesh that's covering those. And again, it's the same principle, panelised, so when not in use, they could be stored out of the way. Nice and simple. So, all planted up now. I'll get this uh, front back on then the lid and just get this bolted up. And I'll just use wing nuts on the bolts just so that I never need a tool to take this apart. I could just do it by hand. And this will keep it all together through the winter months and stop it blowing apart like it did the other day in Storm Arwen. So there we go, that'll do for that. And then we just need to lift the lid back in place and weight that down with some bricks. Now, before I built myself up to using these hot boxes or building them and getting there, I, along the way, like many people, tried various methods and things. I've tried the sort of perspex roof type structures like a coal frame with bricks around it. It works fine, but it's a little bit haphazard. Um, I've tried um, hoops with plastic. And one tip I can give you, this stuff will only last a year, but if you can find a big furniture store, Things like um, sofas and brand new mattresses and beds and that sort of thing come wrapped in big sheets of plastic. If you can ask them at the shop if they're unwrapping something, they may give them to you. Or if you know a neighbour who's having a furniture delivery, you know, you can get that sort of thing. It's only going to last you a season or two, but, you know, it can get you out of a hole if you need to protect your plants. So there are just other ways and methods that you can do it. And I've even... Um, just put piles of bricks down with a, an old plastic bag on the top of it and just had things germinate underneath them. I will put a little link up here to a video I made, I think it was earlier this year, might have been last year, but anyway, it just shows a couple of uh, little variations of cold frames that you can do. But if you can get yourself organised to, to use that, you can grow things out of season. So this time of year, growth is really, really slow but you can get things going. And over time, what tends to happen is it might not put on as much lush foliage as this, but it will certainly be putting out some roots and getting, getting going so that when the warmer weather comes, it just springs into life like this stuff does. I mean, this stuff looks absolutely stunning. I could eat it now, but uh, we'll wait a bit. <laughs> but anyway, that's it for this one. I hope this has helped and do consider um, these hot boxes and uh, I'll see you all very soon. Please stay safe, look after yourselves. Tirano.